When the OnePlus One arrived back in 2014, it's a phone that really stood out in a lot of ways. Its design, its customizability, and of course, its price. Now that we've reached the 5T, the sixth iteration of this flagship phone, it's actually a lot more, well, just normal. The price, while still below the competition, is catching up, and it's starting to look a lot like other smartphones from the front and the back, and the customizability here has all but disappeared. It's no surprise that the 5T is a better smartphone than the OnePlus One, but when you consider that it was released three and a half years later, and at nearly twice the price, the question is, which was better value at the time of release, and is OnePlus moving in the right direction? Aesthetically, OnePlus has cleaned up really well with the 5T. The One looks almost like a prototype with all this text on the rear, and both have pretty nice finishes too. They feel surprisingly similar, and don't get me wrong, it's a great finish. It's soft, it's grippy, and it's pretty resistant to fingerprints. But if you look at what the OnePlus One was up against in 2014, compared to what the OnePlus 5T is up against now, the competition has really heated up in this department. Whilst back then we had phones like the Band-Aid looking Galaxy S5 to worry about, and the OnePlus One was great in comparison, the glass and aluminium competition from Samsung now is in some ways more premium and more functional than what the 5T can offer. So in this sense, OnePlus has lost its lead a little bit. Physically, the 5T is a more refined phone from every angle. It is the same weight, but the 5T is slimmer, slightly narrower, and much, much more comfortable to hold. Whilst I personally think the angular aesthetic has potential on the OnePlus One, the 5T is the better looking phone side by side. Amazingly, the phones have practically the same resolution, and given the time difference between both releases, it's somewhat surprising. At 1920 by 1080 the OnePlus One was very much matching the likes of Samsung in terms of resolution, and at this time, of course, that was one of the specs that really turned heads. Same resolution, but a much, much lower price. Now, the OnePlus 5T does have a better display, don't get me wrong, it's larger, taller, more colourful and brighter, and with a much higher screen-to-body ratio to better fit the 2017 look. But with a resolution of 2160 by 1080 the 5T actually has exactly the same pixel density, and three and a half years on is very much on the back foot compared to every other phone out there. But there are two ways of looking at this. You could either say OnePlus is falling behind, they're stuck with 1080p in an age of 2K and even 4K displays. Or the company with a focus on price has made improvements in only the places they are absolutely needed. And above 1080p, display resolution is arguably not one of them. Now I'm gonna side with the second. The OnePlus One has got pretty weak color reproduction and the 5Ts is fantastic. Past OnePlus devices stuck with 16 to nine aspect ratios and the 5T has got the brand new 18 to nine standard. And whilst of course the Note 8 has about two times as many pixels on the screen as the 5T, it is tough to actually tell the difference. So OnePlus, rather than looking as if they're behind, should be seen as conservative. As these phones are meant to offer a flagship experience for less money, the company does have to be very careful what upgrades they make. For the 5T, it didn't make sense for them to perhaps put a 2K panel on, and that is not to say we won't see this in the OnePlus 6. In terms of speakers, this unfortunately is not exactly a progressive journey forward. The OnePlus One actually has better audio output than the 5T. This has a dual speaker, whereas the 5T has a single, and it's actually slightly louder too. Although of course, again, this is a case of being selective as to what is important to keep the price down. I really value good speakers, and so for me, it's pretty inexcusable. Cameras are one of the areas in which OnePlus has undoubtedly made leaps and bounds in the right direction. The OnePlus One was criticized for producing bleak photos with a slow shutter time and a really simplistic, not too great looking user interface. And even today, after many updates, I would still agree with that premise. The 5T produces brighter, sharper, and more vivid shots. And of course, we've got that dual camera now, which allows you to use portrait mode. Interestingly though, when you compare the two phones side by side, you'll notice that whilst of course there have been hardware improvements here, a lot of the improvements come in the form of software. The punchy colors you see in the 5T's photos are a lot of the time artificially enhanced to the point where actually if you zoom into some of these photos, you will actually lose a bit of detail compared to the OnePlus One. Moving on to the software of the phones, this is a very interesting category. The OnePlus One is effectively running a custom ROM out of the box, which gives you a lot more room for tinkering. You can tweak everything from the navigation buttons and battery icons, and it's also packed with hundreds of downloadable themes. As the company has evolved though, it has shifted to Oxygen OS. The OnePlus One was a hardcore device, but to tap into the larger, more casual, and slightly less tech-savvy user base that the company is trying to appeal to, it offers far less in the form of customization. Everything just works out the box, and most of those settings that you could originally tweak with Cyanogen are now just set to their least controversial settings. Now, as a result of this, the software looks a lot cleaner. Everything has been reworked, from the font to the icons, to the battery charging animation, and most of it is for the better. I do think it's lost its personality a little bit from Cyanogen, which was filled with hexagons and sharp lines that really embodied the Cyanogen image. 
It's just a shame they couldn't have cleaned it up, whilst at the same time allowing for the tweaking that made the OnePlus One so enjoyable. Don't forget that whilst the OnePlus One is going to max out to Android 6.0, the OnePlus 5T has got Android 7.1 now, with a guaranteed update to Oreo. Alright, that's all well and good, but one hugely important question is how well do the phones perform? Now what is good to see is that the core DNA that made the OnePlus One so great, this price-defying level of performance, has not changed with the 5T. Both phones have pretty much the best system on a chip available at the time, and neither is beaten in terms of RAM capacity in its respective year. However, this almost makes it sound like the 5T is not miles and miles ahead of the OnePlus One, because it completely is. Even though there is only a three year gap between these two devices, in the market for smartphones, that is a huge, huge deal. So comparing the Antutu scores, the OnePlus 5T is approximately three times as powerful as the OnePlus One. So that is definitely encouraging. The OnePlus One, whilst it was really great at the time, does struggle with modern graphics, trying to play intensive 3D games on them, and it's very easy to tell the difference. The battery life on both phones is more or less identical. In fact, the slightly larger capacity on the 5T pretty much exactly outweighs its larger display, its more powerful components, and its slightly more efficient software. What has really improved though is charging. Whilst the OnePlus One charges fully in just over two hours with subsequent devices and the release of its dash charge technology, the OnePlus 5T with its larger capacity battery can do so in less than one and a half hours. So yes, the 5T is a more normal smartphone. It is more similar to its rivals than the OnePlus One was, but in a lot of ways, this makes it a better phone. There is a reason why most smartphones are curved in shape. There is a reason why user customizability is often limited to end users. The price going up was inevitable. Just from a business standpoint, retaining a $299 price point for this kind of spec would be loss inducing. And even though the price has gone up, the OnePlus devices have consistently remained three to $400 less than the most expensive phones in any year. And that is a big saving. In conclusion, back in 2014, the OnePlus One was a more shocking and more impressive phone perhaps a little bit more worthy of the flagship killer title. The 5T released in late 2017 is a far less surprising device and in a lot of ways less of a flagship killer and more of just a flagship. But the 5T is a more finished product from a company that is ambitious as ever and that's exactly what we needed from the OnePlus One. So it's going to be exciting to look into the future and see how the company continues to impress us. Thanks so much for watching guys, it really does mean a lot to me and if you did enjoy the video, if you could subscribe to the channel that would really make my day. With that being said, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.